Well, that was an awesome little segment from Melly, so you guys now know how to get involved with us here in the studio. And we always want to hear your predictions towards the games. And let's actually talk about the game we've got coming up because it is going to be an absolute cracker. School bus up against Freefall. Two interesting teams with two different, uh, let's say, obstacles in their way. School bus obviously lacking one of their leaders from previous times. And actually Freefall being fairly new to this. Mm -hmm. So, who do you need to look out for? Who's going to be making the big differences here? So... As I've uh, said before in, in previous match days, uh, School Bus missing, Stalker, their team captain, and um, obviously Pavel, who's now moved over to uh, Virtus Pro. So there's their two big players that have gone. That's made it a little bit harder for them as a team, although, you know, I think School Bus were kind of, you know, going down a little bit at the grand finals, and that's when they had Pavel and Stalker in their team so very good point, perhaps actually. the results are not really to do with them at all and more of just a, a th they need to shake it up they need to change things around and that's what they have done so this could actually be a good thing at the start of the season though i don't think it will be they need to get used to that that playing they need to get used to without those players so obviously the usual suspects though shanish um definitely be looking out for apple arclit arclit now um the uh, head of school bus these days and free fall the finnish team alongside their their sister clan, their sister team, um, drooling leprechauns, both from the clan R Sop, which anyone who plays on clan wars and that stuff uh, knows that they're extremely successful there. Players to look out for, obviously Wilkie, the team captain, Everson. I, I really enjoy the way he's been playing. Largo as well in the MX 1390 has been pretty fantastic in general. So I think they got a lot of good, solid. Um, Light tank players, heavy tanks, they need to work on a little bit, but so far they've been doing pretty well. 50% win ratio. Uh, they did lose to Kazna crew at the beginning, but the first match day as, as a brand new team, it's it's always the hardest one. It certainly is, and I, I've got to say, I've, I've been enjoying Freefall so far. I like their play styles, but School Bus to me, previously brilliant side. Uh, not quite having this start they wanted, I feel. Mm -hmm. you know, Not struggling yet, but yet to really prove themselves into the form they previously had. Mostly, their first game went okay. C-Play are actually a very reputable side now, showing some great results against some good teams. They managed to overcome them 2-1. to one. But then it was the lucky Karaki game that we're all looking towards. Obviously, that 3-2 scoreline really must have caught them out in the end. A very talented individual team, but they must find that cohesion here, I feel. Yeah, they need to make sure they don't have a repeat result against a new team. They certainly can't go two match days without a win. Um, not against the teams that have just joined us. Uh, anyone who remembers that lucky cracky game um, and anyone who hasn't watched it, head over to youtube.com forward slash WGLEU. All the VODs are up from last week, up from Super Week there, so do check that game out. It's definitely the, my highlight for the week, definitely the one I would look at if you do have a look at anyone there. So free folders on your screens there, you can see aggressiveness up quite a lot. Decision making, I would... I would say they are, they are improving. I'll, I'll put that up a couple mm. of notches as we go through. Fight coordination still lacking. Accuracy, though, a very good statistic for them. I think one of their strongest sides for freefall is um, Wilkie's very calm. He's a very collected person. That's definitely going to help when it comes to those firefights. And also, they've got a lot of good individual players who have a kind of synergy that you can only get with, with when you're playing with your friends, when you're playing with people you're very experienced with. Mm. So certainly a lot of potential with these two and certainly a lot of uh, good results, let's say, coming into this. I think the only problem when I look at Freefall now is the fact that they had that 3-0 defeat mm -hmm. against Kazna. But then Kazna looked on fire that day. I think that's the only thing I can really kind of say about that. But, you know, then they went on to beat Denial. So it's, it's very hard to read into this. You know, one opponent they got completely smashed by. The other, they did the same back to them. So it's this kind of weird little picture. Maybe we'll finally find out where these guys are. Currently sitting, uh, you know, one win, one loss. Not not a bad way to begin the season overall. Uh, certainly not better than other teams. But, you know, if they can manage to take down School Bus, this would be an incredible match. But School Bus themselves, very talented. I... I'm not sure if the individuals within Freefall, let's say, are actually better than the individuals mm -hmm. within School Bus. Because even through the recent games, Applewell, win or lose, has still been performing excellently, uh, as we kind of expect such a young, talented player to be doing. Um, but I, I'm yet to see Freefall having that big player. I'm not sure if it's just because I haven't seen them on the correct maps yet. Maybe I haven't seen them on their strengths. Um, but I've got to say, I'm looking to see what they can bring. Who's going to be their standout star players? Is there anyone yet kind of shining to you in that sort of aspect? Um, I would say Everson definitely is an is, um, experienced player. He's been around for a long time. 
Uh, definitely, I would say, maybe the Butcher of uh, Freefall. Okay. Uh, Largo as well is impressive. Psycho Mike in the Tier 1, and when you want to put him into an IS-3, he will perform any day of the week. So for me, those kind of players are coming through as... as as extremely competent, very good for their team. Um, but generally, Freefall is, is a team that we still need to learn about. It's still a team that um, we need a few much more match days under our belts to really see those characters like Apwow, like Breakneck, for instance, like uh, Elian, um, all those kind of star players that are right at the top echelons of this uh, of this uh, eSport, uh, that then we can see maybe, okay, so Everson is the guy who makes those crucial plays when it's one versus two or one versus one. Okay, Largo may be a little bit more consistent. He's always at the top of that damage mm. board, for instance. Yeah. You know, all these things kind of start piecing Building together. Up, it's yeah. all like a jigsaw at the end of the day with these players, everything. You know, these are actual people sitting behind us and playing this game. So um, that's very important to keep in mind. Um, but for me, yeah, I, I would I would, I would, say for the new players, Levson and Largo definitely stand out. Um, I have to see that how that pans out for School Bus. Dead Hunters new to the the team. Live for life for surf. Life for surf. L I V E um, is uh, one of the new players as well. He's he's been doing okay. I think quite impressive. Positive yeah. back in the lineup. He's he's jumped around quite a bit. He started off in um, I believe it was uh, Red Tide. Then um, you know he moved through all sorts of teams and finally finding himself back in Europe playing for uh, School Bus. So we can kind of start looking towards what maps we can expect these two to do well on and you know what maps suit which team and you know where their strengths really lay because we know School Bus to an extent with their previous captain obviously uh, Stalker in the lineup if we look at them in that aspect because it's still very early days within the season obviously mm -hmm. you know we can't just instantly say okay they're great on city maps they're great on this map because for Freefall we yet to really see this overall picture as you said you know it's still very much a small glimpse towards what they could provide so what sort of maps do you feel would favor one team to the other here? You know, is there a city map that maybe Freefall could find their footing on, but you say they lack sometimes that heavier, you know, uh, tank capability within that lineup, but, you know, a couple can pick up the IS-3s if needed. But School Bus, they, they've got some great heavy tankers there. So, you know, what sort of maps would suit these two coming into this? So, Drilling Leprechauns and Freefall are very similar in terms of the way they play, and. You know, that's hardly surprising considering they're all from the same community <laughs> in World of yeah. Tanks. They definitely, you can see that the similarities, you can, you know, really draw those uh, those conclusions across. I say for for, um, for Freefall, they are definitely more of a, a hybrid city map. I think Ruhrenberg Ensk is, is definitely a, a strong map for them. Okay. For me, School Bus, as long as they don't... You know, the way Lucky Cracky beat School Bus in the previous match day was mm. by basically watching the VODs and basically just counter threatening School Bus were too confident in the way they were starting off their maps. They were being too lackluster and weren't thinking, okay, how is this other team going to play? We're just going to do our first two-minute game and, and see what happens. And that obviously didn't work. Lucky Cracky were ready and waiting and they performed very well when it came down to it. Um, but first map will be Prokhorovka from the north. Uh, that's going to be uh, School Bus's pick. Definitely a map I would say they're going to uh, do well on, I think. Although the wins have have been pretty much uh, you know far and wide on Prokhorovka, a lot of draws as the yeah. teams aren't really you know I can't I can't um, really put my finger on it, but they aren't really clued into the map at the moment. It's it's very hard to play thousand by thousand meters of almost pure openness apart from that right side, which we're seeing the team slowly but surely gravitate towards. Um, so yeah, I would say Prokhorovka uh, yeah. will go inside of uh, of um, of school bus. See, I'm trying to think back. Was it actually Kaznakru had some great strategies on that map very recently? I think they're the only team I've seen actually picking up a mm -hmm. victory on there in some sort of convincing fashion. You know, great uses of, you know, the very end of those railroad lines just peeking up and over very well. Um, I'm looking to see actually a team take that sort of initiative and do some sort of damage along those lines because at the moment, as you said, it's very much a draw map. There's been very few teams willing to make those uh, plays or kind of have strategies coming into it. It's all been a little bit like, well, as we said, first two maps, let's just find our initial positions, you know, hunker down, play safe for a couple of seconds, and then maybe see if we can get a weakness. But even in the matches we've seen teams getting, you know, the damage advantage on the opponents, they haven't been really making their move. And and why is that, you feel? Do you think there's been any changes that may have caused this, or is it just the teams not yet that confident? It's, it's just the map in general, as I said, a bit too open. 
um, a little bit too big and you need mm. to be getting the information and sometimes that takes a long time. Obviously, you know, it's quite easy to draw it because without the tier 8 point rule, you can just hide in one corner of the map. You don't really have to worry about, you know, on end scampering up towards the top left of the corner uh, of the map because you got 600 meters like we saw on, uh, on the previous round. Um, Dream Leprechauns did against Denali Sports on our first map, Ensk. Um, but, you know, talking about maps in general, Wargaming are obviously uh, working on a, a specific esports map, hmm. um, which is going to be, I, ga I, I guess, I haven't seen any pictures of it or anything. Um, it's going to be pretty much 50 50 split in the middle, equal. So, a bit like Himmelsdorf, very, very. Nice. Uh, very um, balanced, you know, no team has an advantage, which has always been a problem. You know, depending on the changes, one side always has an advantage to the other. I think the only one really doesn't, maybe Cliff, maybe Himmelsdorf, but definitely Himmelsdorf more than Cliff. Mm. Um, so that esports map is going to make a big change. It's going to be smaller, I imagine. Um, so you get to see the action a lot quicker than you do on this one. So that's very important to keep in mind as well. Um, and and generally. You know, if you're making an esports map, you don't have to worry about stuff like where can we put artillery? Can artillery have like uh, can it have a place? Can have this? a place in this map? We don't have to worry about tank destroyers. You know, have we put too many long straight roads where you can just put the ray guns, which are on tank destroyers these days, at the end and you know do that huge <laughs> amount of damage? We don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. You have to worry about cool stuff, which is what, what you want as a map maker. You know, where is this route going to go? Where 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 can we make this? You know cool little part of the map where you can see this flank happening here with a 5100 and the AMX 3090 going around this way and you know all these kind of things in which come in mm. which you know make a great map and uh, make the teams who are the best team the ones which are more tactically clued in have the the most likelihood the most chance of winning so obviously with that in mind while we're waiting for the teams to get ready obviously we are uh, just taking our time here we will get to the game as soon as possible but I want to go you know you guys at home you play World of Tanks, we all play World of Tanks, but you guys at home play it the most out of all of us. Maybe not him, but still. And all of us here, you probably guys at home play it the most. So I want you guys to tweet through to us what you would like to see in an eSports friendly map. That 50-50 split, you know, completely equal. Would you like it to be an open map, a city map, a hybrid? Let us know your thoughts towards what you'd like to see in it. You know, we're not going to say it's going to make any difference, but it's always good hearing from you guys at home towards what you think would be the best esports friendly map. Now for you, what would you like to see there? Maybe a open map, a city map. Obviously you can see mm. down below the Facebook and Twitter. Go onto Twitter, tweet through to us at the WGLEU and let us know your ideal setup. City, open, hybrid, small, big, 50-50. All of these small factors coming into it. Let us know what would be yours. I think um, for me, I think the most logical one would be hybrid um, because then you can see more variety in the tank lineups. You can see tanks like the T69 and the AMX3090 be used. Mm -hmm. But I think generally as an esports map, if I was wargaming, I would start with 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 a, with a pure city map. Right. To get the basics down, you know, it's the easiest to make. It takes the shortest amount of time, and I think it can be the most cool tactically. Yes, we'll three, see three 5100s. Yes, we'll see two IS3s. Um, maybe they can find a way of working in a T69 or an AMX3090 into those lineups. But for me, it would be a pure city map. And then, you know, the second map, if there's going to be a second esports map, would be. Um, something a little bit more open, um, something open but not polarizing. I think that's very important. You know, Prokhorovka, you have that right side with all those houses, all that cover, and the left side you have all those bushes. I would remove those houses, remove those bushes, just have that center ridge line, remove the hill as well, remove the uh, the railroad that comes in between, and kind of just have it really is just an open Pure map. Pure open. With, 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 with the right positions for the bushes, the right position for the rocks and, you know, maybe some water features here and there. So the team still have cover, but it's not, you know, insane where they can kind of hide behind it for the whole map. That's very important indeed. Um, but yeah, that's for me, it would be city mapper than uh, open map. Well, you've heard his thoughts. I personally would love a city map to see another one that would be great because I feel some of the best moments we've had have been on some of these city maps. You know, Ensk, you look back to maybe Magus back in the day in that tier one play. Then mm -hmm. you look to Himmelsdorf, you've got Elian obviously in that brilliant 1v3 that he pulled off. I would love to see another city map of that sort of caliber. Very evenly split. You know, maybe a little bit of open towards it as well. Maybe a little bit of, you know, a Ruinberg style in there with a little bit of the open ground. 
But yeah, I, I like a little bit of that. I, li I like the heavy tanks there, but still. I think the teams are just getting themselves ready, so do not fear. You'll stop having to listen to us soon. But as I said, make sure you go onto Twitter, at WGLEU, and let us know your thoughts to what would be the perfect esports map for you guys at home. So, we can actually start looking towards this. Obviously, Prokhorovka will be that first map of ours. A map that, as we said, has its downsides in esports at times. It is mm -hmm. quite a polarizing one that can sometimes mean that teams can draw it out if they do not get that big enough advantage quite happily. You know, it's, it's a very hard map to get the advantage on. So, tank choices alone. Is there any surprise going to be coming out of these guys? When I look at Finnish teams or, you know, Scandinavian teams generally, they do have this little element of surprise. Sometimes Speil would bring out something a little bit crazy. You know, you had uh, a couple of other here and there you know, interesting tactics. Would we see it today or do you think that maybe Freefall, they're kind of calming it down a little bit and they're kind of being a little bit smarter about the things these days? Yeah, I think um, the, 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 the days of Speil's crazy randomness <laughs> have gone. I think for Freefall and Drooling Leprechauns, it's going to be more about... That consistency plus the Scandinavian flair, uh, which uh, obviously these teams, these players have. So for me, it was just going to be, I hope at least, it's going to be Triple AMX 1390 Double T69 for both these two teams. Maybe Triple T69 Double AMX 1390 Double Tier 1. It really doesn't uh, matter. You can have that switcheroo whenever you want. Um, 4 and 6, we haven't seen it a lot. Um, as no, we've we been, haven't. We haven't seen it a lot in this season. Season 3, we saw, we saw it, it on more and more. Cliff. We saw it on Cliff once, um, Virtus Pro, I think. Yeah, I'm trying to think of who else we might have seen using it. I think Kazna might have at one point on Cliff as well. I'm not 100% sure, mm -hmm. but... Why is that falling out of favour? Because it, came a bit of, it became a bit of a staple diet for these maps at some points. Is there just... Maybe an easy counter these days? Or? It's really more just the way the teams are playing these days. The meta changes all the time. Everything's mm. you know, the way these teams are playing together uh, always changes. And the yeah. good thing, I guess, the, the reason why the 4 and 6 worked um, was because maybe some teams just didn't know what to do against it. How do you counter right. it? What do you do? You know, it does so much damage, 320. Uh, but now it's more known, more understandable um it's had a little bit more time in game it's not really a surprise any, anymore and you just need to make sure you you stay out of the way of its gun you know it's going to be sitting back quite fast so you can go five versus four in a firefight and really any tank at range uh, unless it does well any tank at range apart from if it's an auto loader tier 10 td is is it's not great you know it's it's it can balance yes you, you, you can so many variables can, so many variables when a shell is speeding towards a, a tank you've got armor you've got penetration you've got angle you know you've got is it going to hit the tracks where it's going to get soaked up is it going to hit the gun is it going to hit the commander's copula where it can get soaked up you have you know normalization come into into effect when you're not using heat ammo and um, you've got armor thickness you've got everything you know all these factors that come in which is why you want to be as close as possible so you can reduce at least the accuracy at least the rng element of it all um, but tank lineups are starting to uh, come in now. Triple AMX 1390 T32, T69 double T1 for freefall. Hmm. And I'm seeing something fairly similar for school bus so far. I'm not sure if they've gathered their full lineup. I think they just about have. And what are we seeing on their side? So it's going to be Triple AMX 1390 Pershing T32. Interesting. Both these teams are picking a heavier, slower lineup. Uh, mm. Definitely more for school bus with that uh, Pershing and T32. Says to me that they want to stay hull down a lot more. They want to be a little bit more centric than uh, than Freefall. Freefall got a little bit more of a fast lineup. They got the T69 for that burst damage. Maybe they want to go a little bit more aggressive, but Could definitely be. for school bus, they want to stay at range. They want to get that damage down um, before they can go forwards. Well, we are now moments away. Obviously, guys, once you do your tweet about what your ideal esports map would be, Put your predictions through to us, School Bus or Freefall, the new Finns to the scene who've kind of melded together and getting some great results so far, or School Bus who had the surprise in their last play day. It's going to be a hard one to decide, I think, for now. I'm going to stick with School Bus, but things might change as the day goes on. I think I've got to see how they're going to play, first of all. So many talented players within one lineup. Mm -hmm. It's hard to deny them on maps like this, but guys, I think we are just about ready to get underway. So let's get rid of that first map, Prokhorovka. <laughs> Thank you. 
so welcome into the first map. It will be Prokhorovka, as we've discussed at length, and Freefall will be in red starting in the south, and Skorbas in the north in blue. Now, first map here, a bit of an open one to begin with. What are your thoughts coming into this? Where are they going initially? So, um, a little bit more... I think predictable what what kind of lineup score buzzer to pick now they're starting from the north at tier 32 in the Pershing almost certainly it's going to be heading over towards the left side free fall something a little bit interesting you would have expected them to go maybe um, over towards the village but instead opting to go towards the left side as well you can see Everson uh, heading forwards Morning Wolf in support you've got to be very careful with that T32 that you don't get caught out early on because it's a slow lumbering tank and Psycho Mike all over towards the left maybe trying to get some flanking shots if he can um, Everson is going to be trying to keep that one away trying to keep uh, the uh, ever encompassing school bus uh, from going for us for being aggressive but school bus definitely more as I said they're going to be more centric Freefall can be a little bit more flowing. They've got the T69 in there, um, which can be a little bit more fast. They've got the Amix 39 over towards the right side with the Tier 1s. That's also going to be very, very important indeed. Um, but the standard start, I would say this is what I would have expected. Maybe I would have expected the Tier 32 to go right, but the spawn perhaps didn't allow it to do so. Mm, so... For me, I'm looking out for Apple. Wow, he's always a big player on this map in my eyes. I remember when he went up, I think, to the top of that small hill over there, and he actually did lay down some brilliant fire. So certainly looking towards him to do some damage here, but you can see the 3090s spread themselves out a little bit. Apple Wow on a little bit of a split towards the center of the map, whereas Armalee and I believe uh, Dead Hunter there will be over towards the other side. So an interesting beginning so far. Neither side actually taking any damage, even though they are very close to each other. And we are seeing a small split from Wilkie, I believe, actually, heading across down towards the village. Apoel might be able to catch a glimpse of these guys if he's careful enough. And we will have to see how this one really pays out, because... You know, if, let's say, Apple Wow or, or maybe, you know, Solwind actually do spot these two players, what sort of impact could that have? It's going to have a huge impact because the more tanks are, more more damage dealing tanks, more combat tanks are in one area for school bus. That means they can float onto oh. the T32 and the Pershing very easily. Wilkie does spot it, gets spotted there by Solwind, so he has to get taken out very on. Wilkie also getting caught out in the middle. This could be trouble. This really could be. Armalee and Applewell, the two players you definitely don't want hunting you down, and now hot on Wilkie's trail. I'm not sure what he can do here. He's taking a big beating down a 3-5-3. He's going to be destroyed straight away. Now Armalee and Applewell turn their attention towards Agenti, who's over towards the side in the village. Armalee takes a bit of a pounding, but Applewell still sitting pretty, doing the job he knows he can. And, well, this is a bit of a t terrifying start for Freefall as Agenti will just about whisk away, I believe, into the distance and the engagement will slow down. But over towards the more uh, west side of this map, Everson trying to edge forward. You've got Positive and Shani still here. And this is a dangerous move from Freefall. Put themselves in towards that slight little defilade there, hiding down below the ridge. Positive can land these shots, and he's doing it. Zim's going low. Tier 1 probably going to fall. Psycho Mike now coming into the action. Looks like he wants to engage towards Positive. Finally, damage comes in towards School Bus, but Mike is in trouble. There's players in the back doing the damage, but Positive is surely going to for one more shot, there it is. Psycho Mike lands it, but here come those 3090s. Applewow, Armley, Dead Hunter, all arrive, and this could be the downfall of free fall very quickly. Yeah, Everson is going to try and do some damage as he can. He does actually fall. Agenti's onto Armley. He might actually be able to take him down here. Let's see if he can do it. Morning Wolf was in the way. Agenti now has three tanks just staring him down, and Morning Wolf being picked at from every single side, surrounded by the faster lineup of School Bus, as now just the tier one stand. It's not looking good for the last man. He's made a dash for it, but I can imagine he'll be spotted out pretty damn soon if he's not careful. Yeah, Solwyn is going to be able to get there pretty quickly. Juku is going to try and hide if he can, maybe draw this one out, but with six minutes left on that <laughs> clock, it's going to be pretty much impossible, I think. Um, I think he's going to maybe hide for one or two minutes and he's going to get taken down very, very quick indeed. But generally looking at that engagement, I think it was all pretty much in the bag for for um, school bus when they <laughs> took down Wilkie in that time. He's gone 90. for the uh, submarine approach, I believe, is yeah, uh, what we'll refer to it as. <laughs> he's gone down, he's dead. Yeah, yeah he's, he's not having a good time. So first map will be going to school bus looking pretty damn deadly from the very offset. And I want to go back to that moment where Wilkie mm -hmm. got caught out by Applewell. Uh, I feel that was almost the initial mistake that just cost them the game there. There was there was two mistakes to that. That was okay. a twofold mistake um, from from Freefall. I mean, the first mistake was Wilkie being so aggressive 
Um, obviously, you know, we've seen it a hundred times before, before in Prokhorovka. Once you've spotted the left side, you know that the other team is on the left side, you try and get the map control. So you go for the right side, you try and get that village, you try and get that whole uh, right side of the train, tr tra train track. Wilkie tried to do that, he tried to go forwards. He spotted the tier one, he stopped, tried to get the tier one down. Maybe if he hadn't stopped, he would have lived yeah. a little bit longer, maybe long enough to get behind some, some cover or not. Um, that's a 50-50, but he shouldn't have stopped. He should have left a genti to go for that shot in the background. So he, a genti, at least he's in cover. He would be able to kill that tier one, and he, Wilkie might have lived, as I did just uh, say. Uh, but then a genti also being out of position, he should have been in position to support Wilkie. He was completely in no man's land. Mm. He should have been more over towards the left side, still in cover, to be able to cut off Apple out there in his AMX 1390. That was another big mistake. So Wilkie going far forward too far and Agenti not being in the right position and not making the shot he should have done. Well, if you play school bus at their own game, there is the danger that it may come down to, you know, the smaller engagements where the individual players like Apple Wow can come into their own and that's when you know you're in trouble. That guy, you don't want to give him those opportunities because he will just take them and you know it's going to go downhill pretty damn quickly. So first map does go to school bus, but we can start looking towards the second map now. Steps, another open map, a little bit, has a little bit more direction, mm -hmm. I feel, than Prokhorovka. Uh, maybe not as drawn out as much as well. It has a little bit more of a uh, decisive ending if teams want to go for it. Um, who do you think may have the advantage here? Because I'm not actually sure. Open map-wise, I think School Bus played that quite nicely. Yeah, I think they can be reasonably happy. They did a good job once they managed to get going and they made yeah. the right decision to push on. Um, they did a good amount of damage, but at the end of the day, they just need to be a little bit more careful when they're pushing forwards. They need to be thinking about it. Um, it's almost playing, you know, you can't play school bus at their own uh, their own game. Uh, generally, on, on on open maps, not all too impressed with free fall. Um, they've been pretty, uh, pretty unable to commit to situations. We've never really right. seen them winning or losing on an open map. They've always Just been a little bit drawing it out, exactly. Right. So uh, maybe that's going to be indicative. Maybe they should stick towards Mines, Ensk, Ruenberg's a little bit more than Steps and Prokhorovka. Um, but for me, I think this one is going to go towards School Bus once again. Lineups have come in, though. Triple AMX 3090, double T69, double Tier 1 for the side of Freefall, just waiting on Shanish to come in game, but almost guarantee he's going to be picking a T69. So for School Bus, Triple AMX 3090, T32, T69, double T1. Well, I think I'm going to have to stick with School Bus as well. I, I do half feel for Freefall then, because mm -hmm. let's say, you know, the, the situation when Wilkie didn't happen, Let's say that they didn't get spotted out, he played a little bit more cautiously. We don't know how that game could have unfolded. Because it did literally, it was like a, you know, it was like a house card. You, you flick one little moment and it kind of falls over, the rest of it will tumble. Um, and that one weakness was shown. And obviously, School Bus are not going to look an advantage like that and just say, no, thank you. We'll just play it out for the harder game. They took the advantage and they ran with it. Completely fair. But I, I want to see what happens if Freefall don't make that initial mistake. They don't give the advantage to School Bus. I want to see that happening. I want to see it come down to these good exchanges. So I do believe the teams uh, are getting themselves ready as are we. So it's now moments away from going to Steps. Keep your predictions coming through to us, guys, because Steps is next. So, welcome into battle number two. The first map went in favor to School Bus quite drastically. Open map like Prokhorovka, and now we'll be on to Steps. Another fairly open map, but maybe Freefall can withstand making those mistakes. And, well, Freefall will be starting in the south in red and in the north in blue. It's School Bus. What are we seeing from the offset here? So, we're seeing the Freefall heading over towards the left side. Jagenti leading that one, but pretty much the whole team, Psycho Mike, uh, not including the AMX 1390. Pretty much a standard start from them. I think, you know, wanting to go over towards the left side is something they should be doing. They need to be going for those engagements, not let School Bus get in their stride, not let them get the flanks on. And for School Bus, sending the DT2 towards the trench is what we'd expect. Get it into a good position, get it held down. 
Yeah, and that's indeed what's happening right there. Shanish in position, positive as well. Everyone looking like they're in the right spots here. And let's see how that one comes into effect a little later on, as it looks like maybe Freefall aren't stopping just yet. They're pushing around quite far. If they keep going, I can imagine Solwyn might actually catch a little bit of a glimpse. Dark God Zim as well in the kind of background there. They aren't too aware of where their opponents are, but they could certainly can do some damage. I think the first couple of spots might be coming through very soon. A couple of bits of blind fire, but Freefall pushing quite far forward here. Yeah, they're going to try and get the uh, spots out across onto Arm Elite. Which is what we see from the south, though, when they do go over towards their left side. You can be pretty aggressive. You can go... F uh, uh, uh. You know, once, you've got, once you know the other team is not sitting up in their base, not getting the defense down, then you can go forwards. You can really send those AMX 1390s into a good position, get the spots out with your tier ones, get it into a crucial tactical place where it can spot the cross, where it can spot the cap. Make sure you get that information because obviously World of Tanks is a game about spotting. It's a game about, you know, tactics. You've really got to be thinking 10 steps ahead of the other team and a little mistake, a little positional mistake, and it can go all all disastrous long as Agenti has to make sure he doesn't do just that as he does get spotted out by Dark Gods in and Arm Elite. Sampa gets, spot, gets uh, spotted and tracked in the middle. Very, very lucky from him. That could have been the first frag into uh, School Bus's favor. Um, as a tier 1, only 115 HP, 240 average damage from the F3 on the AMX 1390. But for me, Freefall, um, in a little bit of a more aggressive stance, I would say it's pretty even. It's just on the other side of the map. Freefall's gone towards the base of School Bus, trying to get the shots out, trying to get that HP advantage we see so often on steps, leaving the tier 1s in their base to uh, uh, stop the cap. A little bit surprising where they've put them, though, because... You know, you would expect Juku to be up somewhere in the in the hills because they're, they, you know, I mean, those hills are really a godsend. It takes just about enough time at the beginning of the map to get up there and get yourself into a bush and behind cover, but not too much time that you can actually get killed. So it's it it really is a perfect position. Not sure why Freefall not deciding to go with that one. Um, and obviously these two teams just trying to get some damage down. Armley does receive the first one, 861, uh, left on that MX 1390. Yeah, but I, I'm still really surprised from Fee Freefall. A very aggressive start. You know, they're, they're happy to engage, it seems. And let's be serious here. It seems to work out to an extent with them. They made the mistake before, previously, of getting Wilkie caught out, which really did kind of suddenly create this huge deficit of, well, uh, <laughs> any sort of hidden knowledge. So as soon as those two are spotted, it was game over. This time, they're, they're moving more as a pack. Let's say they're trying to keep themselves together, would you uh, assume? And, you know, is there a mistake to be made here from Freefall? Is there a way they could get caught out? Or are they being a little bit more aware of where their downsides may be? They're being systematic right now. They're being, um, they're being, they're playing it perfectly, I'd say. They're not really making any mistakes at this point in time. Um, you know, they're just going forwards. They're making sure they have every angle covered, making sure they get the spots with the Tier 1s or the AMX 1390s that are just about fast enough to avoid the shells. Um, that's also a very important point, you know, that AMX 1390 is so small, it's so agile. It really is a great tank for steps. That's why you want to be seeing three, and that's why you'll see most te uh, teams bring uh, uh, at least three, some teams even four. And, that, and they this, are, this they, they are <laughs> heading towards the middle a little bit. Um, I, I wouldn't say it worries me. Um, they're just going to be trying to get some uh, some some angle onto school bus, maybe head down in towards the trench of those AMX 1390s. But the name, the name of the game on steps is getting as close to your enemy before they know you're there. We saw it on, on, on Denali Sports versus uh, 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 Druiding Leprechauns in the previous round on this map. Denali Sports were so so close to, to 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 them before they got spotted but just not quite close enough and that's why they ended up losing that engagement um and that's what these two teams want to be doing school bus though quite happy to sit back quite happy to be defensive at this point in time but uh free fall certainly aren't you can see them starting to rotate now psycho mike wilkie heading up that in the amx 1390s and you've got to remember guys wilkie it's their team captain and that's something that's going to bite them at some point it's it might have already bit them a couple of times it's mm. it's impossible unless you're a woman who you know can multitask to, to <laughs> actually lead and play at the same time it, it ju men just can't do it it just doesn't work um you have to focus on one thing at a time and um and i just don't think they can quite do that they need to have a second shot caller maybe they do i'm not sure maybe everson or uh genty might be the second shot caller but slowly but surely freefall 
are heading forwards. They are trying to find an angle. They are trying to find a way. I think three MX-3090s around the flank and send the T-69s in first. So the whole of school bus rotates around to try and deal with those uh, T-69s. Then you can send the MX-3090 doing the real damage from behind. As long as they hit most of the shells, they should be able to do the damage they need to. Well, it will be positive he'll be meeting the uh, entirety of Freefall first and then probably Dead Hunter if they do begin their push around here. And I've got to say, at School Bus, they, they do have the patience to pull this off. A couple of blind shots coming through. They have not spotted Freefall out just yet. So Dark God, Zim, Armory, Shanish, everyone else waiting in the wings. A couple of spots being made from the opponent. So I can imagine even by that, School Bus might work out what might be coming over that hill any second now. So Morning Wolf being spotted out there, positive will let a shell fly but to no real connection but positive just trying to wait it out couple of shots come back through none really connecting however so he will be at least maintaining this position fairly free morning wolf just making sure that he avoids positive positive is in really the best position he could be at this point he's you know one versus five and he's he's spending them off just on his own that's the kind of staying power the t32 has with uh, 298 millimeters of, of mantlet armor. It can just sit there. It can take damage. It can take a real beating. But Morning Wolf Everson are going to start making way across. They have to try and do that. But Positive oh, just made wow. a shot. So they he's, he, they are going to make it. They are going to manage to get across there. But what can they do from this point on? This is a really interesting 2-2 two -two split coming out. Psycho Mike and Wilkie going to the right side. Morning Wolf and one other. I think Everson, as you said, splitting off towards the left. Agenti still in the middle. And they might actually be kind of caught out here. If they're not careful, they need to be able to position themselves well here. So Morning Wolf already taking a shell down to 8-5-4. Another will connect. And they're actually going to make their move. Wilkie inside. Psycho Mike moving around the right flank. There the two will be making the first real contact. Can these shells count? Positive is being ignored. It's all towards Dead Hunter. Three tanks against one, but can they stay alive long enough? Do they have the staying power here? Applewell, next target. You can see Positive is completely free. Applewell is taking a pounding. Three tanks round the backside. The Genti will deal the damaging blow. And actually, School Bus might be in trouble here. Those T32, Positive just couldn't react to the AMX 1390 speed flying through. This is that flank I was talking about, but Armily, he's going to try and save the day. Let's see if he can. Three shells back to back towards him. He's going to be taken out immediately. Left in pieces on the battlefield. As now just Positive and Shanish. The battle tanks left alive. But look at the HP of Freefall. They can do this if they play it absolutely perfectly. And Positive coming around the backside. He's got a good line of sight on three tanks here. Psycho Mike exchanges though. Tracks Positive down. This means probably game over if he's not careful. Positive surely going to fall. No, he's going to take one out with him. He's not going down without a fight here, leaving Shanish with a hell of a lot of work to do. And well, not a lot of time to do it in. He's got four possible tanks to take down. Morning Wolf, Psycho Mike, Wilkie, Agenti, all very low, but one minute and nine seconds to do it in. Can he do this, Laughter? Ooh, Soul Wind just almost takes down Agenti at MX-1390, but I think he is going to manage to do it. He can't ram him out because of the HP left on that AMX-1392. He has to get the shot, and he does hit it. Shanish remaining with full HP, though. Right, Shanish took down one. He's now going to be tracked just for a touch by Morning Wolf. Psycho Mike is avoiding it. He's forcing Shanish to engage towards Morning Wolf, who's got far superior HP right now. Shanish is struggling to make these shots count. This could be game surely here. He's going to be taken down even lower now. Down to 450. Morning Wolf is stopping him, landing these shots towards Psycho Mike. It's the big brother protecting him right here. Perfectly played out by Morning Wolf, buying the time, allowing the cap to even begin. And Shanish, you're left in trouble, buddy. There's not much you can do. Bouncing the shell there. A genty Ooh. moves in, but it's Morning Wolf to land the shot. And I've got to say it, brilliantly played out in the end there by Freefall. Bit of a dangerous game they were playing, but it came down in the, to the brilliant engagement I feel they made. Completely ignoring those heavier tanks, those big boys who just stand there and say, you can't take down our HP. And they're like, okay, yeah, we can't. Let's go elsewhere with these 1390s. And it kind of worked. It, it worked perfectly. This is, I mean, I've been talking about this for too, too much days. Obviously, Wilkie's been listening to me because <laughs> it works perfectly. I just don't understand why more, more teams don't do this flank. We've seen it in two or three seasons. We saw it last season plenty. Uh, yeah. You know, you have those AMX 1390s. You have right. three of them. They have the speed. They have the penetrative ability just to go straight through the lines without taking that much damage. So you send them around on the flank. You always have them on the flank. You send them just straight through the enemy team. The T-69s come around from the other side. This case, it's around the death blade around the hill, so they're still held down in the initial engagement. Ignore the T-32. It's got 320 average damage. Doesn't really matter. It's going to be able to get one shot off. It's got a nine-second reload. 
it's not going to be able to do that much damage at the end of the day. The only time the T32 actually does damage is when, you know, in that initial part where Positive was trying to get the plot shots. That's where the T32 work, works. It doesn't actually work in a, in a real firefighting situation. Um, so 3MX3090s were just eradicated. They, yep. they, it was, you know, the reason why Freefall won that was they had th their 3MX3090s focusing um, one at a time on the other AMX 39. So focus fire was brilliant. Free for, uh, school bus were caught on the back foot. They couldn't quite uh, organize. They couldn't quite get their, their tactics straight. They couldn't quite get the, the communication right. Um, and then from that point onwards, it moves over towards the tier ones. They had to kill the tier ones to not get the draw. And then, you know, Shanish left on 1.4k HP. He should never be on that much HP in the first place. Obviously, he wasn't in the fight. Uh, maybe had some problems. Couldn't get himself in the right position at the right time. Maybe just chasing onto those 3090s playing a game of cat and mouse as opposed to anything. So brilliant tactic from Freefall altogether, yeah. um, proving that they're not a one-trick pony like they were, in, uh, well, winning against one good team last time. They certainly look like they can beat School Bus here. They'd still have to make sure that they play their normal tactics, their normal strength, which is going to be uh, the next map. Ensk city map, obviously, I think a little bit more consistency. They can't go with those quick flanks. They may need to make sure they actually have the... the the real stopping power and the focus fire and just that ability with the, the heavy tanks to uh, to hit those targets. Well, as you said, at the very start, they're a great team in the lighter tanks. They have a lot of ability there, but when it comes down to the heavier tanks, that might be their downfall. That might be their issue. And we saw their talent then with the coordination, the absolute perfect focus fire in those lighter tanks with the maneuverability, the ability to move around, be as fast as you want, really put school bus out of position, just caught them completely with their pants down. It's brilliantly played. But as you said, it's a little bit harder to do that on Ensk. You can't go whizzing around people in a 5100 or an IS-3. Doesn't quite work to the same capability. But what do you think we might be seeing coming out with these tank picks come, kind of coming through right here? Mm -hmm. I think they are just beginning their choices. I um, imagine it's normal. I'm not sure. I think yeah, I, I think it's normal. We're just waiting for a few more yeah. to come in. <laughs> Somper's playing the IS-3, Everson's 5100 as is a Genty in that 5100 as well. Obviously just waiting for a few more to uh, to jump back in. Uh, Admin has given the go-ahead for these teams to uh, pick their tanks, but I think we can expect three IS-3s, two 5100s, or three, three uh, 5100s, two IS-3s. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, score, scoreline is all even, so, you know, they can draw this one out, both of them, if they want to get the win, so obviously that's going to be in the back of their minds a little bit. It could be, but I feel Ents doesn't really allow for many draws. It's quite a small map. We mm -hmm. know that by now. It's it's, it's very close quarters at times. Um, and we saw teams trying to draw out in even just the last matchup, sending tanks from both directions and getting completely destroyed. So it's, it's quite hard to draw it out unless, you know, both teams don't engage. If both teams play that passive game, or they play more defensively, mm -hmm. or go to polarizing sides, then okay, it might happen. But both teams have to have that mentality. Cause I feel if the team engages correctly, it can easily be won if a team is wanting to engage on this one. So I'm hoping we see a little bit of that. I believe Free Falls lineup has been completed and no real surprises there. Uh, it's the 350-100s and two IS-3s. Mm -hmm. It's what we've kind of got to expect on this map now. And I imagine they'll be mirrored pretty much by School Bus. Yeah, I think we can expect Dead Hunter to pick a 5100. Mm -hmm. Indeed, it does lock that one in. So for both these teams, uh, it's going to be 350-100s, two IS-3s, two tier one standard lineup on on all city maps, including Ensk, maybe not Ruinberg, but then, you know, Ruinberg is, I would say, a lot more hybrid than Ensk is. You can, you know, just see the, the spread between the green side, the open side, and the city side is a lot more towards that city side than anything else. So, your prediction on this one, who is going to take it, or will it be a draw? I think, for me, I think um, School Bus is going to take it. I, I want to agree with you here. It's hard to deny these guys on those bigger tanks. You know, mm -hmm. I've got to say it myself. So, guys, we are ready for Ensk. So welcome into the third map. It will be Ensk and Freefall will be starting in the south on a little bit of a high note after picking up that brilliant victory on the last map. In the north in blue will be School Bus looking to really kind of regain their place in the season as one of the top teams. So let's find out what we're seeing from the very offset here from these two.
Freefall doing the unusual thing of pushing to the city. I said last matchup that most teams head up towards the, the green side, and that is really what you do. Go to the green side, be defensive, maybe try and thwart off an attack or just go for one yourself along those train tracks. But Freefall setting up a, a wall of death alongside the uh, wow. one line, maybe expecting a push, a, an early push on from School Bus. But School Bus are, have gone into the city, haven't, go into, haven't gone over towards that green side, uh, but they are much more focused to D5, D4. I think, honestly, for School Bus, it's more about, you know, what happens at that five-minute mark. we got Agenti and Juku. Um, Agenti sitting in the uh, 5100 and Juku sitting in the Tier 1, making sure that flank is all covered up and okay. Psycho Mike in the Tier 1 to spot the push from the uh, the main city. And then the rest of these tanks, Sompa, Wilkie, Everson, and finally Morning Wolf, uh, waiting up the one line for a push. Shanish is sitting up at the end of that, um, also <laughs> waiting for a push. So... I'm not sure how this is going to work out. I think this is a direct counter tactic to what School Bus have done on this map previously. See, and this really does remind me of, you know, back in the day we saw it was Mouse Sports pulling this out very similar to this aspect. And then they would use maybe, I think it was two tanks to actually bait them across and draw them down. So, for example, uh, Juku or Genti would have to drag them into that line of fire and then they'd make the move. So it's a really interesting start. And... You were saying, is this a really direct counterplay to School Bus? I, I don't recall them making a gigantic push down that 5-6 line. Uh, normally quite a reserved team in that aspect. Is this something that you think they've looked at and gone, no, this is, this is what we need to do against these guys specifically? Well, if you do head... Well, I guess, you know, the, the thing behind Free Falls tactic would be, okay, most of the time School Bus like to go into the city. They don't like that green side. So, so yep. at some point, we're gonna, the School Bus is going to push down, try and get their map control over towards the city side. Um, get the whole of that side and then they can start looking towards the cap or whatever, the green side. So at some point they're going to come down, four tanks are waiting here and they're going to just absolutely obliterate anything that comes around that corner. 390 damage times two, 300 damage times two and then you have the auto loaders coming in uh, as well. So it, it would be absolute decimation um, from the side of Freefall. But oh, we are seeing wow. the retreat now. Wilkie, Sompa, Everson and uh, Morning Wolf are all going to try and maybe come from a different direction, head towards the city side. Um, but you can already see the rotate. Uh, school bus starting to look towards the green. Zone, Armley going down the tracks. He's supported by the 51 and from behind. This could be dangerous for Freefall because they're not in the right position to deal with that. Agenti is on his own. And if, if, if any spot comes out onto Agenti completely unsupported, it's going to be absolute disastrous for the side of Freefall. It's, it's a matter of who finds who first. Let's bear in mind that School Bus have no idea that Freefall are doing this. They have a good idea maybe that they're not in the usual positions, but this is a big enough map you can pull something out of the bag on. So right now, a couple of spots being made, but that's on to Armley and Dark God Zim. So no huge surprise. And actually, Positive is backing away. Solwyn might have a huge surprise any second now if these guys keep pushing this sort of direction. And actually, School Bus... Here we go, the first spot's being made. It will be Solwind catching out. Wilkie, Somper, Psycho Mike, Everson, everyone has now been spotted. Here comes the engagement. First shot's coming through. Wilkie receives a face full. Wilkie's in trouble already. Two shells back to back. Surely going to go down here. That IS3 is being ripped to shreds. It's going to be left for scrap, but the shot bounces from Shanish. And right now we're going to see if they can take them down. Shanish first to really fall here. Psycho Mike went down earlier, but just a tier one. Now Deadhounds are left in a 1v3, but staying healthy using the dead corpse of his teammate to keep in cover. The first caps have begun and that's going to be down at the other end here as Wilkie now trying to challenge elsewhere. Somper, Morning Wolf and Wilkie looking for a way through but there is cover now. Applewell comes around, gets two shells back to back. Somper's in trouble. Here comes Positive as well. This is not looking good. Free four are falling drastically. Morning Wolf is surely going to be the next target. He's going to be taken down. This is clinical from School Bus. Can they find Everson? Can they stop this in its tracks as Positive and Applewell now move Moving in, Applewell is low, but positive, confident as ever, looking to ch challenge down Everson. I don't think this is going to go well for Freefall. No, it doesn't look like it's, it's going to go at all well for them. Deadhound is going to get himself into this game and he's going to finish Everson off. Everson is now in severe trouble. He's trying to back the hell out of this. There is nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And Positive just lining up probably the final shot here. Takes him down. And now just really a genty alive. And already Positive straight up rolling towards it. Dead Hunter as well. 
all trying to find that last man who can do that damage. Apple Owl could fall, but I don't think we're going to see much other than that right now. As Agenti, you can see these guys moving in for the kill here. Agenti will take the stand, but it won't be for long. He's got one more good shot in him, and now just one man left alive. It will be Juku, and I don't think there's much he can do in this. No, it's uh, pretty much all game over here, wrapped up for School Bus. Uh, you know, that was pretty much a simple game for them to win. It basically came down to the fact that uh, uh, Genty was out of position and uh, Freefall wasn't. You know, that was that was all it came down to. Good stuff then from from School Bus, though. Two to one, the aggression from Freefall not working out. But, you know, as I was saying, basically Freefall actually, they, t they executed pretty badly. You know, we'll yeah, keep going first, you know, completely on his own. He should have had Sompa towards his left, but he didn't. Mm. So Wilkie took a heat road of damage at the start there. Definitely didn't help in the firefight. And then uh, all School Bus had to do was rotate around five versus four. Agenti got some crossfire on, but he also took some of his own. But at the end of the day, it was the, the you could see the HP pool was in favor for School Bus because they had the he had Apple in the equation. Um, and I think Agenti should have just been in there getting the brawl down. I think they would have definitely won. They would have got Dead Hunter down that 5100 if he had been there. And that's all it came down to. Five versus four. Yep. Um, even though it was a four versus three at the beginning. Uh, some great, great play by Dent Dead Hunter. Obviously a new addition to a school bus. Big damage uh, done doing, as well. Doing 2.3k damage followed by positive 2.2k highest damage. Even fun free fall was ever seen in that 5100. Yeah, so... I <laughs> Once again, not a big fan of Freefall doing that sort of tactic. That reminds me of Spale. Mm -hmm. that, that's all like, okay, let's all in here. This is our tactic. It doesn't have a backup plan, really. It's kind of dependent on this working. And it's that slightly sh mm, narrow-sighted gameplay that kind of just hand it over to School Bus. Their individual play, as we now know, School Bus will not fail as individuals. You may outstrat them. Mm -hmm. You may outplay them overall, but in the 1v1s or the 2v2s, I don't think that Freefall would be able to take them, personally. You know, maybe there's a little bit of a chance there, but at every opportunity that you know, Freefall have given School Bus to go, okay, you're going to try and challenge me like this, we will win. First of all, it was Apple Wow when we look back to Prokhorovka, he caught out Wilkie. And then in that position again, you know, I hate to say it, Wilkie got caught out, you know, pushing forwards. Yeah. A little bit short sighted in my eyes. Yeah, just bad driving skills as well. He just drove straight into wall. It, it you know, it was kind of a strange situation. You know, you have two options in that you either go left or you go right and yep. he chose the middle. So he just <laughs> went, drove straight into the wall. Not um, idea. It, I, I was expecting the whole team just to roll around that corner and go for positive in, yep. the, in the RS3, take him down and then move on. But it was kind of a split between and that allowed positive in the game. That's why he did so much damage in an RS3 um, from the side. He was just in the perfect position to mm. get good damage down. Uh, next map is going to be Winter's Himmelwolf, though. Could be an interesting one, I think. It could be. Freefall didn't look weak on that on, on Ents. They looked like they had some heavy tank skills. Um, so they do obviously have a possibility... Uh, of winning winning on this one, but not being so impressed with them on, on Himmelsdorf. they still got yeah. a lot to prove. Um, and as I've said a million times before, this is the map you have to be good at to be to be, to be competitive in World of Tanks um, in, in general. See, but, okay, if, if I look at Freefall here, I want to see them playing good basic tanks. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see these all in strats. I don't want to see them doing, you know, the spell push across the map. I don't want to see them doing these kind of like cheesy strategies. I want to see them doing these nice thought out, you know, movements because when they do that, like that 2-2 uh, split they did on, let's say, steps, when they put those 1390s out, mm -hmm. and they use that nice little pincer movement, focus down the correct tanks, brilliant team, lots of potential. All in strategy where they put every single heavy tank in one area, not sold. I want to see a well-played-out map here. It's hard to play school bus at these games, don't get me wrong, but I feel you've got to kind of... You've got to try it, at least. You can't just go for these cheesy strats against them, because it might catch them out once, but if it falls apart, you end up looking absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. So do you think we're going to see a well-rounded team here from these tank picks, or what do you feel? Well, school bus only need one more win um, to take this series. Obviously, best of five, you need to take three... Um, to go through with the three points. Mm. So, free fall, um, I wouldn't risk a draw if I was them. No. Um, at all. I, would, I think, you know, it, it's still, the draw is still on the cards, but I would I would love to see free fall evening the score up to two or two all and just come, and come to that last final map for, for the decider. So, um, they just need to make sure that they have 
they have the execution down. I think everything up to their engagement is very good. They, they have they have the, the the all the trademarks of a very good team. It's just when they actually get in to that engagement situation, that five seconds, that they need to be careful. They need to make sure they get all the the T's crossed, all the dies, uh, eyes dotted. And there we go. So guys, let's get ready for that possibly final map, Himmelsdorf. So welcome into what could possibly be the final map between these two. Currently 2-1 to one in favour to Schoolbus, who will be starting in the south in blue, up against Freefall in the north in red. And well, what are we seeing so far from these guys? I have no <laughs> idea, to be honest. i uh, never seen this before. Uh, like a pretty much a similar thing, I guess, from uh, we saw from Freefall on Ents. They had that wall of death this time with five tanks and not four waiting for a push from school bus and this does actually look like it's gonna work i have absolutely no idea what's going on right now guys because school bus is walking into this trap like an absolute boss school, uh, i mean look at that they're going all along the three four line they're pretty much ready and waiting to go into the lines of uh, of free falls guns although they're now starting to head over towards that left side the three line Maybe going to come up from behind Freefall. This goes disastrously, but Juku is ready and waiting with the spot. See or maybe he's not. It. He's on the wrong side. This is going to catch Freefall oh completely off guard here. Oh, my God. This is going to be carnage. I, I'm i terrified of what's going to happen. Juku made the spot towards Solwyn, not the others. They do not know that Schoolbuster are here, but they're going to find out right now as the damage is coming flying. Everson. Agenti, Sumpa, all taking huge amounts of damage. Dead Hunter has to back away. But Armalee as well, ready and waiting. Apple Wow's there. This is the disaster that was waiting to happen if this did not go correctly. Now left in this bit of a standoff. Dead Hunter, Armalee, positive. Wilkie, Sumpa, and Agenti waiting to engage. And this could go so very wrong, so very fast. Another shell will connect. And this is not looking good. Sumpa might be the first to fall here. He is down to 3-1-7. Juku being challenged down the tier 1. There he goes. Sumpa is out of there. Psycho Mike trying to make the rotate. Not going to happen. Armory positive and dead under waiting to get in here. You can see even in the background, there's more tanks waiting to engage. Armory peering around, looking for the angle. He's going to find it. That's Morning Wolf taking an absolute beating. Positive backs away. Carefully done. School bus though. They are looking hungry for this victory. They are going to try and finish this one off. Wilkie does take a big shot there. 405 damage goes on to the IS-3. Everson and Agenti are doing the best job to try and take this one back. Let's see if they can. Applewell has been taken low. He's going to have to be careful now. Can't happily engage, but you hear those shells being exchanged between them. And the, pos the just the HP pool that is left towards School Bus is disastrous for free fallers. Well, the last couple of shells might be coming in very soon. Dead Hunter's going to gift that one over. Now another falls. Agenti, Everson down. Morning Wolf and Wilkie, the last two standing. The final push begins. Shanish round the side. This is all over, ladies and gents. Wilkie, the man at the helm of Freefall, just watched that ship sink at the hands of School Bus, not losing a single player. Wow. That is what I wanted to see. Just to prove my point, I hate these all-in strategies from these guys. They're a talented bunch, but they just gifted that to School Bus. I mean, it could have gone a lot worse as well, folks. If um, if, if School Bus had committed more tanks around that corner, yep. those two IS-3, Sumper and Wilkie, would have been absolutely mashed. They would have been destroyed in, in a couple of seconds by the 5100s. Um, but, you know, I think... I can analyze, and anyone can analyze that. My my <laughs> sister can analyze that one, to be honest. Basically, what happened was, um, you know, School Bus had two choices. 50-50, go straight on down that road yep. and lose the battle. Yeah. Because those five tanks would have been ready and waiting and just decimate them all. Go left and win the battle. Do a, I think they did probably about a thousand damage before, you know, Freefall even had their turrets turned in the right direction. Um, and then the other big mistake was that Sompa got greedy. He played as if he was playing against random battle people who yeah. you can peek against them and not receive a shell because you're angled and, you know, for whatever other reason, you're just playing better. Um, 
but he can't in this work. case. He got he got he got like 700 damage taken off him. He got tracked it without a, without a repair kit. Amaract at the same time. He went Ouch. down, so that was a five versus four. And then from there on out, even though I think Scorebuster would have won it, even though Sumper didn't go down, uh, it made it a lot easier for them, so they could just push around, do the final bits of damage, and uh, take the win. But it, it, it's that's the that is the fourth map over. We are going to be moving on a fifth map, obviously, because um, well. It wasn't one three nil, so then we just play the five maps. Uh, but in general, a little bit of a strange tactic. Are you certain we're playing this? Because to be fair, Freefall can't come back into it. No. But they can get one map back because that makes a difference when it comes to um, something later on. Yeah, the the the, <laughs> the small competition we run later on. If there's two teams on the same amount of points. One's vying for um, a top spot mm. to go to the offline finals. Uh, yeah, you see how they've won against each other and stuff, but apparently not. Teams are having none of it. No, so Ali is wrong. No, I'm 100% right. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh, but whatever, because you know, remember, on, uh, yeah, it's in the rule book <laughs> anyway. But yeah, it's all right. It's fine if they don't <laughs> want. If, if Freefall doesn't want to win, then it's uh, it's okay for them. Uh, so we'll, we'll work on it. Yeah. I'm not sure we can get them back today, but maybe get them up to speed. But overall, they wouldn't be able to come back into it. Uh -huh. But obviously, if you do win maps, it may add up towards the end points, which it mm -hmm. has before. If you look at the previous se seasons, there were so many teams just drawn out on exactly the same number of points. Unless you put it down to a mini tournament, you have to look through the previous ones and see yeah. who's higher overall. There's a lot of factors that come into the end of the seasons because it, these teams do end up being so damn close you know, to who qualifies. So... Might need to kind of remind the teams of that little one there. I think they need to keep that in mind. But overall, I feel School Bus looked okay, but I think Freefall just didn't quite have it today. Yeah, they were a little bit more um, lackluster than I've seen them before, but they are a new team, and of School course. Bus is still extremely proficient, extremely good. Yeah. Um, so you can expect this result. Freefall did put up a fight. I thought they were pretty, pretty decent. They took one map back, so that's fair enough to them as well. Um, Steps was a truly fantastic game, and I think if there'd been more like uh, that. <laughs> open maps, then it would there would be it might be a little bit more in their favour. Scoreboss kind of had the better map pool here, uh, looking at their previous yeah. results. But all in all, uh, an expected result, not an upset like the previous round. You know, Scoreboss just need to make sure that they work on some of their problems. They need to be looking at their steps tactic, maybe go for something a little bit more roaming, a little bit more aggressive, not take that yeah. D32. Um, it's, it's not a good plan in general. I think it never really worked out despite what we've seen, you know, the likes of Virtus Pro do with it, but that's generally because people are just scared of that team. Um, so all in all, an expected result, but Freefall can be still happy going forwards. I just want to ask you very, very quickly before we go to the break. Um, how do you think School Bus are performing now? Let's compare them to the last couple of play days. Is this an improvement? Uh, I would love to see in Prokhorovka, uh, but I think generally it's an improvement for them. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so overall School Bus on the rise a little bit. Let's not read too much into it, I think is the best way to say mm -hmm. it. So I think both of us can chalk a little bit that up to maybe Freefall not playing the best of games against them. But it's not over today yet. There is still one more game on the way today. And even before that, which will be Virtus Pro against Wusa, a game that could possibly cause some upsets, but who knows? Virtus Pro are looking pretty solid so far, I feel. One of the only teams that's been able to transition fairly comfortably from season to mm -hmm. season. Whereas, you know, Wusa have a little bit more to prove, but your thoughts on that one very briefly? I think um, Virtus Pro is just going to it's gonna be a walkover for them, but I could be wrong. Wusa looked know. strong against Kazner in some respects, yep. so maybe we're going to see an upset here. Well, that's something to look forward to. So, guys, do not go anywhere. And even before that, we have another treat coming up, which will be Melly, who will be joining us here at the desk to give you guys a route into how to talk to us here in the studio. So, guys, we'll be back in five. Do stay tuned. See you back. <laughs> 